Hi, this is Mithun from Team Digit here. We've received plenty of uh, high-end GPUs this year, and the fastest that we've had uh, so far is the Zotac GTX 780 Ti Amp Edition. It was uh, clocked at 1006 megahertz, which is way higher than a stock card, which is clocked at 876 megahertz. And the card that we've got today is a Galaxy Hall of Fame Edition. It's a GTX 780 Ti itself. This promises to trump the previous flagship. It's clocked at 1058 megahertz, which makes it 20% faster than a stock card and 5% faster than the 780 Ti Amp Edition. Now, straight off the box, you can see that it's branded white, and soon you'll figure out that the PCB itself is white. It has a lot of uh, custom cooling features, and the PCB itself is uh, custom. The one striking feature about this card is that its cost is rupees seventy thousand. The Zotac amp, uh, amp edition itself, Zotac 780 Ti amp edition, also cost pretty much the same. But uh, we'll see that this might be a better purchase in terms of price to performance ratio. So let's start unboxing this one. So we can see the card pops out first. This nice packaging. We have a door hanger. Beneath that is a little pop-out card, as in we can uh, pull out all the cutout marks and uh, probably make something out of this. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that in the review. This should have the accessories. We have a twin Molex to 8 pin uh, PCIe power connector. We have another of the same. Then there's a DVI to VGA port adapter. User manual, the driver's disc, and a little leaflet that should be the quick installation guide. Yes, it is. It's a rather beefy card and it does take up two slots but uh, we guess the third slot itself would be taken because the cooler protrudes a bit too much you could say. The body is comprised of polycarbonate, it's, it's fire resistant polycarbonate but uh, we never know why you would include such a material in a GPU after all you don't expect it to go up in flames. There are four heat pipes on the top and regarding the hybrid, the cooling technology that we talked about, it has a hybrid cooling te uh, technology. That's nothing new but uh, we have a vapor chamber that sits on top of the GPU and uh, on top of the vapor chamber we have these four uh, heat pipes. There is an aluminum backplate. We can see nothing but uh, a few components over here and the back of the connectors but there are no LEDs over here so I don't see the point of having this cut out over here the grill is slightly different over here uh, normal uh, stock cards what they have is they have multiple small grooves but in this one we see two big ones so we have less metal obstructing the uh, airflow overall. And another different thing that we see is this button over here. It's an on-the-fly overclocking button that's supposed to push an extra 8% over the turbo boost. So you have the normal frequency that's 1058, then you have turbo boost, I don't know what it's supposed to be at. And when you press this button, it goes even further. So even better performance. The two 80 mm fans, it seem like uh, high airflow fans and the fins underneath are not densely packed so it's a right choice to have these fans on. Regarding power connectors we have two 8 pin power connectors to the left of that to sorry to the right of that we see a small uh, 4 pin header 
but I don't know what it's for. It might be for uh, overclocking or modifying the settings externally. Or it could be a fan, I don't know. Has two PCI, uh, sorry, has two SLI connectors on the top. So triple SLI, dual SLI, way to go. In the review, we'll pull over the backplate and show you the PCB. That's when you can truly find out that the PCB is custom. It's nothing uh, that we've seen before. Other than that, it seems a really good card, well built, high performance. Hopefully the benchmarks will reflect that. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the review.